This has been the WMSC interview of Crash Diet by Nick Raquel. You are on your second American tour. What types of things did you think about that you needed to prepare for from the time of your last American tour up until a little bit before you revisited America for this tour? Um, well, this is more like a full-blown headline tour, so we we're doing longer shows this time. Um, I mean, but it's... I think the financial part is, is the thing you have to plan for like half a year until it's, you know, it's all going to work out. So. Simon, you have anything to add? Um, well, I guess it was kind of good that we started out, you know, doing um, this kind of David tour before this because it's like dates in between it takes a while to to get the voice in shape and get it going because when you're doing long shows it's a lot more strain than just doing a support band kind of shows so. but it's been working pretty good but it was pretty rough in the beginning now it's falling into place you guys play in Spain May 21st and then fly out to Tokyo May 25th. Do you anticipate getting any time to spend in Tokyo or Nagoya to go shopping or enjoy the sights? If so, what are some of your goals to achieve during the trip to Japan? I don't know what's out there, but uh, <laughs> I've heard that there's a lot of like, karaoke places and that's all our manager talks about. We have to go to some kind of... Uh, he wants to sing karaoke with us. <laughs> Sounds fun. Yeah. <clears throat> they have a lot of like stuff there, toys and high technology shit you know, want to check out. Yeah, when you go to Tokyo, visit like Harajuku on a Sunday because it's like Halloween every Sunday, so it's just so cool there. But. Like, anyways, I was, like, in Japan back in 06. You guys are finally getting to make it over to Tokyo, May 25th, and Nagoya, May 26th. you have any special messages for some of your hardcore Crash Diet fans out in Tokyo and Nagoya? We've been waiting a long time to come and see you guys. Uh, I mean, we've been, it's been our dream since the band started. What can I tell you? It's, it's going to be amazing. It's our, it's our final big destination. Yeah. <laughs> One of the landmarks in, in conquering the world is, is taking the path. So we're very excited about that. What types of special, like, exclusive merch will you be saving for the shows in Japan? We'll probably do an exclusive merch t-shirt, you know? With a lot of Japanese on it. <laughs> yeah. Probably. I don't know. Now, thinking back on your music education in your schools in Sweden, what would you say was the most valuable lesson you picked up from those days? From school, the blues. <laughs> Anything else? No, nothing. <laughs> Now, what type of message would you have for young Scandinavian musicians in their early teenage years about, yeah, you know, like Norway, Sweden, Finland, about what to do and what not to do to become successful? Not, not the rest of the world's teenagers, just the Scandinavian ones. Yeah. Yeah? Well, I mean, because you got, I'd hope you guys have more knowledge about, like, Scandinavia. Uh, well... I think it's universal. All the kids that want to become something you have to work really fucking hard. If you're not prepared to do that, just leave it. You know, yeah, just uh, if you want to go all the way, you gotta work so fucking hard. You gotta believe in your dream. Persist. Finding the right path to get there. Don't give up. Thinking about Stockholm being the hotbed for the new Swedish sleaze movement, can you describe what a day is like at a hometown show from when you wake up until you go to sleep? Hometown show. It's like Stockholm. That's nice because you can get ready at home, just take a cab to the venue. And that's it, you know? <laughs> yeah, and then you bring some people over for the after party at home. Now, 
On a previous album, Generation Wild, personally, my favorite track was Chemical. Can you paint the picture on how this song came to fruition? Well, I actually wrote it with uh, my buddy Johnny Gunn from uh, Peep Show. I, they changed their name, but I can't remember the name. <laughs> And I guess it's about a relationship with either a girl or a bottle. Okay. So that's what it's about. Yeah. Can you tell me about the writing of the European only track Liquid Jesus? Like who came up with this? And was it like a group effort or was it like only one of you guys that came up with it? It was actually me and, um, and the guy, a friend of mine, which I've known for a couple of years. And decided to, to write some stuff together with us. So we went for, uh, for a little songwriting trip down to Bordeaux, he's from Paris. And so obviously that was a very wet couple of days. And uh, the only thing we came up with was uh, fragments of that song and we finished it together. And, and then we, we and Martin worked on it later. So. Was the song Drinking Without You about anyone in particular? Well, for me it was, yes. For sure. Would you care to share who it, 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 was, it was about? Uh, it was uh, written uh, long ago, uh, like the same winter as I joined the band. Or something like that. So, yeah, or, or, or the winter, yeah, I think it was. For sure, yeah, that was about uh, my girlfriend at the time who was living abroad. And, uh, I remember now, Peep Cho changed their name to States of Panic. <laughs> cool. Thank Very you. Very cool. Now, do go on about the Japan exclusive track, Night Hell Ride. Yes. Well, um,. It's a song about our last tour that was one fucking long hell ride. <laughs> Basically, you know? We, we ended up, you know, in the bus without any power in the middle of the night in the winter in UK and Europe. And it was a mess. Uh, it, was, it was a hell ride. We, uh, Peter had a broken back and... and uh, Eric, he broke his hand, you know, because he got so pissed at the bus driver, so oh, man. He knocked in the door, <clears throat> so we flew in, my brother, who's a drummer, and we completed the tour. <laughs> it was so in. so <laughs> miserable, we just kept on drinking more and more for every night. Anything you care to add on that song? Um, not really. Okay. And <laughs> finishing things off, can you tell me the moment when you guys realized Simon should play the guitar for this new album, The Savage Playground, since he didn't play on, uh, on the last one too? Oh, excuse me then. Well, I didn't play in the studio. No, I mean like play guitar so, though. You mean, you mean live or? Yeah. yeah. He's been, oh, yeah, been playing play. from the beginning. Oh, okay. But not on every song. Yeah. Okay. He's always played on certain songs. So you can jump around on the other songs. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot for your time. Yeah. This has been the WMSC interview of Crash Diet by Nick Perkel.